Well, looks like I'm live. I'll give it a few minutes, well, a few seconds for a couple of people to pop in. Gonna try this live thing again. Um, I tried live uh, once before, didn't go too awful well. Uh, the video seemed to be really jumpy. So you guys let me know if it's the same way on this. Hey, says, hey there. So I'm going to try not to make this a long one either because the, the live streams tend to go pretty long. Uh, you guys that are on now, um, do you hear, is there too much background noise? Because I can close the door of the West Parlor, if so. So give me some feedback on that. Uh, what I'm smoking here is a Molina pipe. I cannot remember what, uh, what the shape is or even what the, the line is, but it's a nine millimeter filtered pipe. It's kind of a bent volcano type deal. I dig it. I uh, haven't smoked it too awful much because I'm pretty much always smoking Sabinelli's and, and Rossi's and that kind of thing, Missouri Meerschaums. But uh, occasionally I'll smoke my, I've got a few Molina pipes. Um, I hope I didn't miss anybody talk about the, uh, the background noise. But it is a raining outside, and I like to hear the rain. Um, Y'all let me know. Uh, I'm going to load up. What am I going to load up? I think I'll load up this apple shape. Sounds good. Glad to hear it. Thanks, Walter. Um, no, I'm not, because you know what? I don't have any 9mm filters left out here. i got to go get some more. So I'm going to try one of these uh, elephant, white elephant, 6mm filters. Um, now, with these, they'll be good and bad. It does constrict the draw a little bit. Not, not too bad, but enough to notice. Um, I've gotten used to it and I just prefer these charcoal filters. So here we go. I'm going to load up this Trevi 320. Um, uh oh, my light went out above me. What do I want to smoke? I think I'm going to smoke some uh, pirate cake. So let me crumble up some of that. I wanted to get on and just talk a little bit about, um, I've been remiss in talking about the pipe meetup that happened in Nashville a couple of weekends ago. Um, we had a good time. I'm not going to try to ramble through, <laughs> I'm not going to try to ramble through a bunch of names uh, of who all was there, but we had a, about 30, I would say about 30 people show up for the pipe meetup in Nashville, and uh, a good time was had, hopefully by all, definitely by me. Um, got to meet some new people, and uh, got to see some old friends. So that is my fifth year attending the pipe meetup. Um, this shirt is a remnant from the past of the Nashville Pipe Show. Let me get better in frame, but there we go. It's too bad they don't do the Pipe Show anymore, but uh, as I've said quite often, um, that, wasn't, that wasn't my favorite part. My favorite part was the meetup, not the Pipe Show. So uh, the fact that we have the meetup every year still is outstanding. Thank you, Derek Tant, and everybody else who helped put it on. Uh, thanks to all the places who hosted us. And this was part of my small loot uh, this year. I got this from Salam at OMS Pipes. He was out there and was uh, 
showing off his new uh, mugs. Well, I don't know how long he's had these, but man, these are fantastic mugs. They are a bit pricey, um, but I got one because it just looks so fantastic. I love these colors. I love that it's hand fired in the United States of America, which I can't say about my pipe nook mugs, unfortunately. They're just, you know, run of the mill, run of the mill mugs made in China. This is a fantastic mug, and I love OMS uh, coffee. So, there's that. So yeah, smoking the pirate cake. Oh, all shaky. Smoking the pirate cake. Haven't had the pirate cake in a while, so we'll see how this goes. It might uh, bowl me over. Daniel, how's it going, man? Maybe I won't catch myself on fire with these kitchen matches. As you can see, the night or the six millimeter filters help me to be a little more aggressive in my light. which is helpful for some blends, particularly the ones that are a little moister or a little more dense. For people like me who are too impatient to actually dry their tobacco out like they should. All right. moist out here from the rain not getting good lights off the box I'm gonna try to keep up with comments y'all but I'm so bad at that If you have a question and you post in the comments and I miss it, I'll go through later and uh, hopefully they'll still be up and I can answer any questions. So yeah, smoking the 320 Trevi with the pirate cake. Talking a little bit about the Nashville pipe meetup. Of course, Derek Tant was there. And his brother, Brandon Ray. I think I just had a question that said, what's the difference, the main difference between the 320 and the 673? As far as the shape? Um, not... I mean, really, just the shape. Um, but they are fairly similar. Here's an unfinished 673 in my personal collection. Uh, you can kind of see the 673 is a little bit longer, a little bit thinner. Um, the bowl in the 320 is a bit beefier, and the shank is a, and stem are beefier. That's really about it. Um, the 320, you'd be hard pressed to, to smoke that hot because the walls are so big. But they both have that slightly bent shape, shape to them. Mm. Pirate cake. Yeah, Nicholas, those unfinished pipes, they're my favorites too. They're definitely not the prettiest pipes I have, but they're the ones that I reach for most of the time. Um, 
I did want to mention, yeah, the 320 is pretty beefy matches. <laughs> Good to see you, man. Um, it's, uh, you can clench it, but you can't talk while you're clenching it. And, uh, there is a bit of weight to it. Typically, these are about two ounces, two and a half ounces. But I sure like them. And the smoke lasts forever if you fill the bowl up. See if I can get a slightly better light. There we go. Have I ever tried L.J. Peretti's Thanksgiving blend? I have not. I've tried very few Peretti's blends. Um, what I've tried, I enjoyed. But you know, there's just so many blends out there. I'm finding I'm trying to uh, Trying to limit, um, you know, I'm finding the types of tobaccos I like and really trying to hone in on what I personally smoke instead of being so all over the place. Let me get rid of this pop-up here. TP. TP asks, what's my favorite corn cob? That's tough. Um... My personal favorite corn cob, I'm gonna set my 320 down for a minute. I don't, I'm hesitant to show it because you can't buy it anymore. Um, they don't have this shape uh, at the moment that I know of, but it's this old egg shape. Not necessarily because of the shape, but because I've spent so much time with this particular pipe. It's got that wooden insert down here that hardwood insert but you can see all the plaster of paris they had to put around the bottom of this thing that's pretty much why they quit making these egg shapes uh for the most part they, they make acorns and rob roy's and things that are similar but it's really hard for them to to get that bottom part to be uniform so yeah that that's a bit ugly honestly but I don't look at the bottom of the pipe. As a matter of fact, I rarely look at the bowl of my pipe. I'm usually smoking it and holding it. So, but I mean, I've probably run minimum 200 bowls uh, through this pipe and you, you can tell it's starting to separate in between. And, uh, but I love it now. As far as a, a corn cob that you can buy now, I mean, they're all very, very similar. They all have very similar smoking characteristics. Um, I tend to prefer the ones that are filtered, personally. Just That's just me. I tend to smoke with a filter in place. Um, and with the cobs, I, I tend to use the balsa filters. Um, Oh, uh, we have a comment, country gentleman. That is a good one. Uh, I tend to go for uh, the unfinished ones because they dissipate heat a little bit more. You can see this one's all chewed up by moi, uh, but this is a, a Missouri Pride. It's one of their one of their cheaper pipes because it's unfinished. Of course, I did this. Uh, I did the coloring there when I got bored one day. Um, but yeah, I think that's a $6 pipe, maybe a $5 pipe, um, really cheap pipe and it smokes really well. Um, I was going to mention a couple of other things. Uh, I really was just going to do a video and it was going to wind up being a 10 minute video. Uh, and then I got the hair to do the live stream and I'm kind of glad I did. Um, 
but I do have some things to impart. Um, oh, also on the Missouri Meerschaum pipes, uh, I will say you really can't go wrong. Um, Daniel, I, I'm getting comments like crazy, so my apologies. I'm all over the place here. Um, as far as putting a filter in place, if you put the balsa filters in place that Savinelli sells, which those do fit in the cobs, the six millimeters, um, there, there's no noticeable restriction in draw. Um, however, if you, you, if you try to use um, these six millimeter filters, which will work in some cob stems and not in others, it's a very tight fit and I wind up having to shove the filter out uh, by using a pipe cleaner a lot of the time. These do can, well, these do constrict the draw, so keep that in mind, but the balsa, balsa filters don't. Um, I was gonna mention sometimes, uh, one of my old high school buddies watches my videos from what I hear. Uh, his name is The Tipster. You know who you are, and it is a shame that we don't hang out because I know for a fact you smoke a pipe from time to time and uh, I would love to hang out with you sometime. So tipster, Mike, if you're out there, send me an email. Um, you can use, use the contacts tab of my website, pipenook.com. Let's get together sometime, man. Let's see if I can go through anything else that I might want to mention. Oh yeah, at Nashville, at the pipe meetup, of course, I got this sweet OMS coffee mug. And Joe Davis was there. And two years in a row, I think, maybe three, I bought a Jad's pipe from him. He makes these pipes, so check out Jad's pipes. Um, this little piece of briar, he's been dating it. So this was finished, what's that, 10, 12 or 10, 13, 10, 15 of 2018. Stallworth, I do have pipe, mug, pipe nook mugs available on the website if you want one. But here is the Jazz pipe that I bought. I've only smoked it one time. See that nice acrylic stem? I don't believe it's Cumberland. I think it's an acrylic stem. It's a small, small pipe, um, and it is a sitter, and uh, he gave me a good deal on it. I couldn't leave it there for that price. So that's the one and only pipe that I picked up this year at the pipe meetup. Really enjoy it. Joe makes a good pipe. Um, let me see if I can relight this 320. I think I had a question cycle through about pipe gurgle, um, specifically for bent pipes. Uh, they, some bent pipes will gurgle, but again, I sound like the poster child for filters. I use filters in most of my smokes, and um, I don't get pipe gurgle, typically, with filters in place. So Daniel's asking, what's the difference between a vulcanite stem and a lucite stem? Uh, vulcanite tends to be softer. It's, now, it's not a gummy bear. You're not going to be able to chew into it. But they are softer when you clench. The lucite stems tend to be a harder material. What that means is your vulcanite stems uh, will be more prone to tooth chatter if you're a clencher and the lucite stems are more resilient. A 
Vulcanite is also sometimes referred to as ebonite. Um, lucite is sometimes referred to as acrylic. So you want to keep that in mind. Now the vulcanite or ebonite stems also in direct sunlight and with a lot of spit uh, on the stem. Over time, you'll see those turn this funky oxidized green color. So personally, I tend to go for the, the lucite or the acrylic stems for my collection. Now, that's not a deal breaker. I um, don't say no uh, to the right pipe with a, with a vulcanite stem. Now, here's some truth in advertising. This particular filter is a bit too constricted for me. I don't like that. So I'm gonna take this one out. I'm gonna try a second filter. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna take it out. And I know that's kind of wasteful, but I want you guys to know that these white elephant filters, the six millimeter filters, they do have constriction problems um, and from time to time you'll get one that just doesn't smoke well that's a much better draw right there I know I've missed a ton of questions, you guys. Again, I'll try to go through those later on. I hope this video is not jumpy like the first video that I tried to go live with some time back. Um, I've gotten a few large orders in, like inventory, that I haven't put on the site yet. So I'm a bit low on some stuff. I know some blends and some shapes I'm out of at the moment. Doc, yeah, this is a great pipe. This is one of my very first good pipes that I ever bought myself, probably six years ago or so. Jason, glad, glad things aren't jumpy on the video. But anyway, today I hope to go through my backlog of inventory that I don't have up on the site. So check on the site this evening. Hopefully some blends I'm out of now will be in stock. And definitely the 673 shapes, the, the Roma Lucites, thanks to matches, uh, sell really well for me and I have to keep a lot of them in stock uh, more than other shapes. And then the 673 Roma with the ebonite stem, I sell a good bit of those because of Gray Bailey. Um, 673 uh, and 320 are, are my two best selling shapes out of all lines across the board. And they're both great, great shapes, great pipes. So, someone asked me earlier, and I hate to keep harping on this, um, but someone was asking me earlier about uh, filtered pipes, and I didn't get to that question in time. Um, so, I'll talk about that just very, very briefly. I know half of y'all are like, I do not care about filters. Why does he keep talking about that? But um, he was asking about the benefits of filters. Um, particularly charcoal filters, and to a lesser extent, the balsa filters that Savinelli sells. They will help with moisture. They'll take moisture out of the smoke, which basically, as that smoke passes through into your mouth, 
it makes the mouthfeel of the smoke, um, you know, that vapor that's superheated over time um, will tend to uh, exacerbate tongue bite, right? So uh, if you have a filter in place, taking some of that moisture out of your smoke will help with tongue bite. Also does not seem to hinder the taste uh, from what I notice and helps keep your pipe lit a little bit better. Now, one thing it will do, because you don't notice from the smoke being hot, because the smoke is cooler than, than usual without a filter in place, you could wind up with a hot bowl, and that's not good. So you still have to kind of temper that. Uh, Make sure you're not hot boxing your pipe so you don't wind up burning a hole in the side of it. But I will say that's never happened to me. I've, I've yet to burn a hole through a pipe or split a pipe or anything like that. And I smoke a decent bit. I don't smoke every day, but I would say on average throughout the week, I smoke at least one bowl a day on average. I just had a question about lighting. So um, should you use matches or should you use an expensive lighter or should you use a Bic? Well, I use them all. I've got a Bic over there. I've got one of those Bic minis. I use standard kitchen matches typically for my first light because kitchen, you know, matches tend to give you a, a, a uh, the temperature of a match, that soft flame, isn't as much as a butane soft flame. And that tends to do well for, for initial lights and uh, second lights after your charring light. But then once I get down into the bowl, any depth more than like a eighth of an inch, I'll switch to a lighter. And I do use Bic lighters a good bit. Oh, I've already got some fluff I need to get rid of here. Been smoking down through this and not even noticing. So look at that. Now I'm almost halfway down the bowl. So I'll switch to this Karibi lighter. Now Karibi lighters are fantastic lighters. I've had this one for about a year now. haven't had to do anything aside from replace the flint, which you unscrew this little part here, pop a new flint in, and you're good to go. Um, some butane lighters tend to have a slow leak, and if you don't use it very often, they'll just run out of, of uh, butane. Haven't had that problem at all with this Karibi lighter. I just had a question about if I sell aromatics in bulk. Well, I don't sell any bulk uh, tobaccos at the Pipe Nook, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. I know bulks are a better value, um, whether you're just getting an ounce or, you know, a pound. It's a better value overall than a 10, but tens you can sell her. I, I prefer tens personally. You can keep the tins. You can keep the. Uh, you can keep the. I cut off my labels after I'm done with a tin. Uh, and you know maybe one day I'll lo lacquer the top of a coffee table uh, with my tin art and put it out here. What pipe is sitting in the fish on the shelf? Right here. <laughs> Right here. This is a Rick Black Morta Pipe. Swirled acrylic stem. Slightly bent, slightly Rhodesian type shape, slightly Dublin type shape. Got this little spinner on it. 
and it's a sitter. And uh, I don't know if you can see Rick Black's stamp there, but it is a mortar pipe. Rick Black makes a fantastic pipe. The fish came from Uptown, I think it was Uptown's, a few years back when I was in Nashville. Piper 69 says, do you have in stock? I, I, I don't know what you're referring to. If you mean the Rick Black pipes, I don't carry Rick Black pipes. He's an artisan pipe maker, so seek him out through social media. If you mean this pipe, I have these in stock, I think, the Trevi 320s. If not, then I will very soon. There we go. I'm in the part of the bowl that Smoke Rings Pipe Dreams calls in the chuff. It's usually about the midpoint of the bowl when the flavors have all married together. Um, stays lit better for a time until you get towards the bottom, which is usually more moisture. Mm. My favorite part of a bowl. Uh, someone just asked me if, about the differences between the 320s and the 321s. Here's a 321. And it's basically just a shrunken version of the 320. That 321 is from the Impero series, and the 320 is from the Trevi series. This is just a, you know, this is the old standby. This is the beefier pipe. This is a smaller pipe. Um, let's see. I don't have my... Uh, I don't have my calipers out here, so I can't tell you what the size is. I believe, don't hold me to this, but I believe um, the 320 is close to an inch across in diameter, the inside of the bowl. And this one is more of a standard size. It's probably like um, 0 0.7, 0 0.75 inch across. This is about half the length of smoke that you'll get out of the 320. Someone commented that the Blood Red Moon is, they'd heard is basically a lane uh, repack. I mean, could be, but even if it's not, that, you know, flavored blends tend to come in, in basic uh, assortments. Assortments isn't the right word, but you know, to me, and you may, there may be aromatic aficionados out there. I'm not an aromatic uh, smoker for the most part, but to me, a cherry blend is a cherry blend is a cherry blend, and a vanilla blend is the same. Um, that's why I tend to, um, when I smoke aromatics, I tend to smoke, um, things like this, uh, Cornell and Deal blends, like the John Marr. It's a vanilla, it's a vanilla, slightly topped vanilla flavoring, bourbon and vanilla. Um... Autumn Evening is probably their, one of their most heavily cased or topped blends, and it's a maple-type flavor. And that's about as far as I really want to go with it. Um, I don't like the really goopy-type aromatic blends. But that's just me. Your mileage may vary. Beardless Gnome Joe. Yeah, Cornell and Deal, they've, to my mind, mastered the aromatic blend to where you get a nice 
flavored blend, but with a good base blend uh, underneath the flavoring. So when that flavoring burns off about halfway through the bowl, you're still left with a good, a good uh, pipe tobacco blend. Goopy just means, somebody asked about that, goopy just means um, something that to my mind is overly flavored. Um, Lane 1Q to me is, uh, it's a little too flavored. Lane 1Q is a very similar blend to, if not identical to, some would say, um, I think it's Captain Black Royal. And their RLP6, I believe, is, is uh, very similar to uh, Captain Black White. The RLP6 isn't quite as bad as far as the uh, moisture content or the flavoring content as the Lane 1Q. So I tend to prefer it a little bit more. Pipe ghosting, I've had a couple of comments about pipe ghosting. So, uh, in my experience, uh, the only blends that have ghosted a pipe, at least the first time around ghosted a pipe, have been Lakeland blends. And if you do not like Lakeland blends, um, smoke those in a cob, please. Because they will even ghost a cob, in my experience. And I just, I don't like them, I don't smoke them. Uh, I don't even know that I carry any Lakeland blends. Um, but anyway... If, if you're concerned about a pipe ghosting, uh, the ones that will typically ghost a pipe are the, the really strongly uh, flavored or high uh, Latakia content blends. So if you're gonna smoke pirate cake in a pipe, uh, you might wanna try it in a cob a couple of times before you try it in a briar, just to see if, if, if you can detect that it um, ghosts. Um, I don't, I don't dedicate pipes. Uh, I tried that early on. But since I don't, I don't typically smoke a lot of Latakia blends, and I typically don't smoke a lot of aromatic blends. It just doesn't, it's not a problem for me. I'll smoke maybe one, one or two Latakia blends a week, let's say, in a pipe, and the rest of my smokes are like Perique blends, Virginia's, Burley's, Old Dark Fired, and it doesn't really ghost the pipe to, to what I taste. That wasn't a good relight. Someone asked me about blends that I'll be smoking uh, in the near future. Some tobacco recommendations. Really, I've shown you can see you can see all this stuff over here on this shelf. That stuff that th those are tens that are unopened that I want to try in the near future. But I've got about that many sitting in front of me over here on my poker table that are open. But you can email me for uh, tobacco recommendations. I've got um, uh, basically a template, a form letter that I send out when people ask about that. Um, that kind of clicks the boxes for a lot of uh, different blends, different types of blends. So you can try one from each. but I tend to recommend and smoke Old Dark Fired blends and Perique blends.
Bear with me just a minute. I'm going to close my garage door. There we go. I'm back. So, still raining outside, not quite as bad. So people are starting to go out in their yards and whatnot. And they're hearing Eddie Gray talking to himself in the West Parlor. <laughs> so I figured I better close that door. We got 40 people on right now. That's amazing. You know, I used to be kind of down on the, on the live uh, feeds, the live videos. Or the lengthier videos, because... To me personally, when I'm surfing around on YouTube, I want to see a five to 15 minute video. But recently, um, I've been getting into podcasts and I've been getting into lengthier YouTube videos just because I like to have it in the background. I'm not necessarily even watching, I'm listening. Um, when I'm packing orders and whatnot. Uh, so I figured, I'd throw this out and see how it does. Yeah, hit that thumbs up button if you like the live feed. I'm, I'm really not sure about live feeds, to give you the honest truth. I don't know how well they work for me. Oh, that coffee's nice and lukewarm. <laughs> um, someone asked a minute ago if I had anything new coming up on the horizon as far as products. Not really. Um, I'm really gearing the pipe nook in recent months towards more towards the new pipe smoker because that tends to be who I get the most as a customer. That doesn't mean you can't buy from the pipe nook if you're a more seasoned smoker. Um, I hope you would. Uh, but um, I tend to get more newer pipe smokers or even brand new pipe smokers that leave comments and say, hey, this is my very first uh, pipe order ever. Um, and then they ask me for tobacco recommendations, which I'll pass along. Um, so because of that, I don't tend to do, uh, I tend to do standbys. Um, and by that, I mean, uh, pipe brands and lines within those brands and shapes within those lines that are, you know, standbys. Um, what I would say, you know, they're, they're go-tos, you know. Uh, and the same thing with pipe tobacco. So, uh, you know, I'm probably not ever gonna carry, well, I don't wanna say ever, but not in the near future am I ever gonna carry like holiday blends or pipe of the years or things like that. Brand new shapes, brand new lines. Um, I think the newest line I'm carrying now is, is the uh, Imperos, um, cause I really liked the look of those. Um, but I really want um, to cater to that uh, new pipe smoker. Um, so anyway, I, I'm never gonna be the flavor of the month type, type business. It's gonna be more tried and true blends and pipes. There's a lot of crosstalk in the comments about meerschaums, and I, I really don't have anything to add. The only meerschaum that I have is a, is a, where's that? Let me grab it, I'll show you. Uh, right here. This right here is a survey meerschaum. 
And I love the carving. It's like a basket weave type thing. I love the swirled acrylic stem. But what I don't like is the plastic tenon. And, uh, you know, and the insert, there's an insert here in the shank. That's So it's, it's plastic on plastic. I can't imagine that's gonna wear well over time. Um, so I've yet to find an affordable Meerschaum uh, pipe that I could, you know, carry and feel like it would be a good recommendation. This is a good pipe, but um, the draw is pretty, it's not tight, but the draw is very small through that draft hole. Um, it doesn't fit a filter, which I'm partial to. And uh, I'm, I'm concerned about that plastic on plastic uh, shank tenon fit. Or mortise tenon fit. I hope nobody's having some sort of drinking game as to how many times I relight this pipe. <laughs> that would not be good. Well, am I out of things to talk about? I will mention the pipe giveaway. I don't know how many people are gonna see this, but um, you know, I, w I was doing um, free pipe Sundays. I think those are gonna go away, unfortunately. Joshua, I'm smoking some pirate cake. But there is a lot of overhead, uh, well, time overhead for me to try and hunt down the person who wins the free pipe Sunday. And, uh, you know, it's because I opened it up so anybody can can say, hey, I want that pipe, and they're entered into the drawing for a free pipe when I do the free pipe Sundays. And those may be casual people um, who don't ever see, even though I reply to their comment and I try to send them a private message on YouTube, hey, I want that pipe, or, or I'm sorry, not I want the pipe, or hey, you won the pipe. Uh, some people just have not gotten back to me, and I don't like the feeling of, it just stresses me out. Um, I don't want people to ever think, hey, he's not really giving the pipes away. I do my best to get a hold of those people, but a couple of those pipes have still been unclaimed. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think I'm going to go that route anymore, which is unfortunate. Dorothy, how are you? Well, most of you probably don't care about this, but I'll mention it because, you know, stuff and things. Our good friend Bradley, he talks about the Seahawks all the time, which I care nothing about. Um... I'm more into video games, which he's also into, but uh, I've been getting more into retro video gaming recently. And when I say retro video gaming, I don't mean the Atari 2600 or anything like that, but, and it hurts my heart to say this, but the Sega Dreamcast is considered a retro gaming console. It came out in 1999 in the States. I just picked up one of those, picking up a couple of Dreamcast games. I've got a, a pretty large GameCube collection at this point. When I say large, probably about 50 games. 
I have a uh, clone console, the Retro Trio HD, that one of you actually told me about. Um, hooks up HDMI to my TV and I can play, it can play Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Nintendo, and Genesis games, which is really cool. There's some crosstalk about wind caps. Um, I'll give my opinion on wind caps. If I smoked more outside, I'd probably use one, but I don't even own one because mostly I smoke here in the West Parlor with that door just barely cracked. Not a whole lot of windiness, you know. I'm, I'm not out driving around in my car with the window open, so I don't ever use a wind cap. Guys, we are closing in on an hour, and uh, I have no idea what else to talk about. Hey, Joshua, so about that Raspberry Pi thing, I went to a buddy's house last weekend, I think, and he showed me his Raspberry Pi, which he had a bunch of emulators on for like the Genesis, Arcade, um, Nintendo, Super Nintendo. He says the Raspberry Pi can even run PlayStation emulators, which is interesting. Might be something I look into in the future. We'll see. He had his rigged up to a, a stand-up arcade cabinet. Um, it was a, a Robotron cabinet from 1982 uh, that he refurbished. Uh, put all new switches and everything in, all new joysticks. They light up, you know. He even got uh, the font from Robotron to put on the buttons. Looked amazing, but I'm not going to go that route. I would personally prefer to sit on the couch and play with a controller. I think his name was Don, just asked about World of Tanks on PC. I used to play World of Tanks. And my YouTube handle used to be Haunted Tanks 75, which is also my gamer tag uh, in World of Tanks. I haven't fired it up or even updated the client in probably over a year now. Um, but I really enjoyed that game. I just wasn't very good at it. I think I need to dump more ash. So, the, the thing that I dislike about me making live videos is I feel that there's too much dead space. Um, and I have a decent bit of dead space in my standard videos, but it's even worse on a live feed. So my apologies as to that. You guys give me honest feedback about that. Um, I would really like to know your thoughts on, on me doing live feeds. Not live feeds in general, but would you like to see more live feeds from the Pipe Nook? Or do you think maybe uh, my standard videos are, are a better format for me? Uh, what do you want out of my channel? Play a game while I smoke. Well, that's an interesting idea. Um, there's a lot to that. Uh, I'd have to have a camera on me. Like what you see Bradley do on the Stuff and Things Plays channel, his second channel. Um... I could play a video game and smoke a pipe. 
I don't know how many people would be interested in that, but there would be more equipment I would need. I would need some sort of uh, video capturing equipment, better editing equipment. I'm pretty much a point, point and shoot uh, kind of YouTuber at this point. Maybe that'll change in the future, but eh. Elgato capture card is all you need. I've heard of the Elgato. I have to look into that. But I've been so busy lately, I wouldn't look for that anytime soon. Especially moving into the holidays. Orders will ramp up. Family and obligations will ramp up. That kind of thing. Mm. The pirate cake gets a little rough towards the bottom of the bowl. <laughs> Almost takes on a menthol type quality. I think I'm going to go get some hot coffee, dump out this bowl, and start packing orders. So, I'm going to sign off. Glad y'all got to see me today. And once I figure out how to stop this video, we'll chat with you later.